So welcome to the AI Edge podcast. And today I'm receiving Bella. She's a software engineer. And we're going to talk about uh, careers in machine learning, AI, and how software engineers can work in the space. Welcome, Bella. Hi, everybody. My name is Bella. I am a software engineer. Uh, I work uh, mainly on the uh, backend side of uh, so, uh, software platforms. And uh, yeah, uh, is uh, probably a lot of engineers uh, right now. I would have a few questions for uh, Damian because he has experience in AI, but uh, uh, I'm not. I, I do not uh, because uh, uh, my main focus uh, till recently was just uh, creating uh, uh, platforms uh, uh, that uh, would uh, not uh, um, have uh, uh, an AI integration. So now we are in uh, uh, in a situation when uh, uh, there is a requirement of uh, in a situation that the uh, AI is becoming mainstream, right? And uh, we as a software engineers uh, have to understand where uh, we sit in uh, in terms of uh, AI uh, uh, integration into a platform, right? Uh, and so because uh, there is a requirement, but uh, the skills, we still need uh, to build the skills, uh, right? Uh, in terms of correct integration of uh, AI models uh, like uh, LLMs, uh, now the other G GPT is uh, striving the market. Where should we run? What should we do? Because uh, the market is already requesting software platforms, uh, integrations, uh, but we still uh, didn't have time to learn how to build, uh, how to integrate the LLMs, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, problem. It reminds me of uh, the same similar problem that happened uh, in the beginning of 2010s, where data science became the hot topic and they started to hire teams of data scientists that could not deploy any machine learning models, even if they're live depending on it. Um, and I guess with that hype around AI or that new hype around generative AI, we're going to see a similar thing happening where leadership want to deploy some new capabilities, but uh, they forgot to make sure that the people that they have uh, in-house can actually do it. And it's tough because, yeah, I mean, it seems to be very interesting what we can do with uh, generative AI, but uh, the skills to actually build uh, new tools with it or new products, well, you need to be trained on or you need to train yourself on that type of skills and you cannot improvise. So I guess there are um, two ways to address that problem. Well, the first way to address that problem is the typical way, meaning that it's communication. Uh, when, you have, when you have a non-technical person or you have a non-technical set of person that are trying to implement new capabilities, as an engineer, it's your duty to inform that set of people that the necessary skills to implement that capability is not in-house or you don't have it, or uh, as an engineer, you should establish the plan that would lead to a potential success of a, a project related to that capability, that new product. So communications is key. You, you cannot jump onto a project because some non-technical person is telling you, we need this. Uh, there need to be some kind of understanding of uh, the budget that needs to be there to implement such capabilities, the skills that needs to be there to implement uh, that type of capability. Uh, you need to uh, have uh, uh, some understanding of how you would design such a product. And so you need to be uh, finding the right people to design such a capability, such a product. So communication and, uh, you know, like making sure that you're able to manage expectations, you're able to uh, establish a plan, a budget, a, de a design to 
potentially lead to some kind of success in that type of project. So this is the first thing. Uh, and you need to be able to communicate that uh, it's not because you're a software engineer that you have the necessary skills to solve that type of problem. So this has to be clear. This has to be established. You know, we need to be some kind of uh, back and forth between engineers and leadership to understand uh, what can be done with the people that are already in-house. The second thing that needs to be done, in my opinion, is if in the next few years you're seeing yourself being at the center of potential AI projects, well, you need to make sure you update your skills. You need to make sure that uh, you have the necessary skills to be valuable to the company. Uh, if you have those skills, you're going to be valuable for your company and, you'll be, and you're going to be valuable uh, on the job market. Uh, but it, it really depends. In my opinion, you, you shouldn't start to train yourself on something if um, you, uh, there's no uh, uh, future where you are actually working on a product that involves those AI uh, capabilities. That's true. And uh, I think uh, from my side, there is a willingness to be in uh, in the middle of the market, you know, because uh, it's, uh, we, uh, there is a shift now on between how we were writing code before and uh, how we will write it now, right? Because uh, we have AI tools to support us. So this is the first thing, uh, but then, uh, you know, uh, every single product, in my opinion, will contain, valuable product will contain an uh, uh, AI element, right? It could be like, uh, uh, it could use generative uh, models or it could use uh, other machine learning algorithms. But uh, uh, as I'm seeing the trend now, because uh, there is a, very uh, strong uh, marketing wave about AI, right? And uh, there is, uh, uh, so the, the, the question is uh, not, uh, or would, do we need to integrate it? The question is now, or when we will integrate it, right? So, uh, but uh, for us as a software engineers, the problem is uh, the market is so noisy, you know, everybody is trying to, 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 to say, you know, or you have uh, to do X, you have to do Y, you have to do Z, right? But for me to jump in uh, as quickly as possible, I have to, you know, to have minimum things to understand and straightforward solution, right? Uh, so then I can jump uh, uh, on and build, integrate uh, some uh, machine learning capability into a software. But uh, when, uh, you know, we have like a thousand players in the market and a thousand voices trying to say, oh, you have to do it uh, in this way. And then another is saying, oh, no, you have to do it in another way. You know, this is like this kind of noise that happens when a new technology uh, becomes mainstream. For us is, uh, as a software engineer, so, you know, it's a, uh, it's a struggle because... Uh, we have to do our day-to-day -day job, right? We have to uh, advance our skills. So we have to learn something new, mm -hmm. but we have also to deliver today something that will work tomorrow, right? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, so I wanted to bounce, to, to, to bounce on two things you said. Um, first, I don't think that uh, every product or every company will need AI machine learning. I, I think it's, it's a mistake to believe that, but I may be wrong. Uh, I don't see uh, why every product should have some LLM capabilities. Uh, it's, it's very specific for specific, you know, it's very specific to some peculiar applications. I don't see why we should uh, put LLMs everywhere. Um, I don't think that uh, those those tools, I mean, the tools that are created using those new capabilities for uh, generate to generate software, 
to help software engineers to, to, to build software. I don't think that those are going to really replace software engineers. I think they're going to enhance software engineers, but, but not really replace them. Um, so I think we need, we need to be careful about this hype. Uh, AI is going to be interesting for some companies. I mean, AI has been around for a long time. What I'm talking about is uh, that, that hype around LLM and maybe other type of generative AI. But uh, some companies will be able to make use of it, but not everybody. Uh, it's, there was a time where every company was trying to hire uh, a data science team uh, to build some ML capabilities in-house, and 90% of those teams got laid off at some point because they were completely useless. They did not bring any uh, impact to the revenue. And I'm going... Uh, and I think we're going to see that again with generative AI, where you will have teams being hired, and those same teams, and those same teams being laid off at some point later, because they're going to be completely useless, trying to build some products nobody wants. So, uh, I, you know, uh, the noise is is a lot related to the hype, uh, and again, I think as engineers, uh, you need to deliver on what some leadership want to create in terms of products, but you also need to be, uh, to have the maturity to uh, question the, those decisions. Uh, you cannot go into a project without some kind of understanding on how it's going to impact the revenue of the company. And if it's not going to impact the revenue of the company, uh, there's, uh, I think, some legitimacy for the engineers to question why a specific project or product may be built. Yeah, uh, I would agree with you because uh, this is more a, a managerial decisions, right? Uh, and uh, not, uh, uh, not a software developer decision. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm uh, uh, facing like situation. I have uh, to leave my current company because I'm relocating, right? Uh, and uh, the situation is I have to find a new job, right? Uh, what I can see happening in the market so of the requests are the job advertising is already asking, oh, I want a software engineer. To be uh, to integrate uh, a generative model, and I want that software engineer to have an experience with it already, production experience, right? So I'm uh, my question is: uh, Are we already seeing some wrong uh, understanding of uh, of what is going on? Of course. Uh, first of all, uh, today there may be like a hundred engineers that have that type of experience in the world. You know, so I'm 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 maybe simplifying, uh, but uh, not a lot of people, a very little, uh, you know, a very few people really have that type of experience, uh, and but it doesn't mean, you know, when a company wants to implement uh, some technology that uh, involve knowing a new skill, they want the people that have the experience. It's normal. From their perspective, from the perspective of the candidate, well, every candidate need to accept that they may not have the right skills, uh, or at least they may not have the right experience uh, as it is requested on a job application. And it's um, uh, it's normal. I mean, it's always the case, you know. Like uh, there's always something that you don't have in terms of skill uh, if you look at the description of a of a job. Now, uh, you can always not fake it, but you can always uh, train yourself. If it's something that you actually want to do in your career, if you actually want to work as a software engineer on a project that involves generative AI, you can always train yourself on how to do that. There are many, uh, there are many uh, informations. There's a lot of information online about how to to do that. It's also a question of how interested you are in the field. If you are interested in the field, 
you know, how come didn't you train already to reach that field? So uh, you can always train yourself. And when comes the time to have an interview about a position that involves potentially deploying or uh, uh, working with LLMs, generative AI, uh, you will be ready to at least have an intelligent conversation, an educated conversation about the subject. If you have an educated conversation, if you show, if you show that you understand what you're talking about, there's a lot of chance that you can convince people because, uh, you know, the 20 of the applicants, uh, hundreds of the applicants are in the same situation that you are in, in a sense that not a lot of people have the skills, not a lot of people have the experience. So they need to choose the best people. And if you have something that uh, demonstrates that you are slightly above the rest, uh, even if it's not exactly what they wanted, well, you have a lot of chance to actually get the job. And as soon as you have a job, you have the experience. And it's something that you can market for the next job you're going to apply to. Yeah, I agree. There are a lot of ways we can, I can solve it. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, if we talk about training, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm training myself. I'm trying to read. I have subscribed your newsletter. So, right, it is uh, given me uh, a good amount of information. Uh, I have subscribed to diff uh, uh, other different uh, people so uh trying to transmit uh, that knowledge but still it's so noisy it's uh you know you have to understand what to do and uh, there are different as as usual there are different ways of doing uh, one thing right and uh, when you are going through a uh, learning or upgrading your skills you have to understand what is the right way what uh, are those uh, two ways described are they same right and uh, so this is one thing, but in terms of, um, you know, trying to convince people sometimes because we are not speaking to, uh, uh, we, uh, we are not speaking to, 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 to a company, we're speaking to a recruiter, right? And the recruiter, what it, it does, it asks, oh, do you have experience? And when you say, oh, no, uh, I actually, I don't have production experience, but I know how to do things. Oh, they just, uh, you know, the conversation stops there. And, uh, yeah, it's a kind of, my thinking is, oh, how we should, uh, as a software engineers, we should to communicate to our side, but yes, it's okay to ask for skills, uh, but don't ask us to have 10 years experience in something that started just, started just recently as a mainstream, right? Uh, because, uh, we, we still have, uh, you know, we still have, have to go through, uh, try, you know, through digesting and uh, trying to deliver because, uh, you know, we uh, we are trained as software engineers, we are trained to solve problems, right? This is our main skill, like, uh, but you have to give us time, you know, just to understand and give us a chance to prove we have uh, this understanding, right? Uh, and sometimes it's like, you have to find ways or play, uh, you know, play a game, like uh, find it, uh, try it one way. If it doesn't work, try it another way, like try to solve this hiring problem or, you know, this application problem. And I'm thinking like, is there a simplest way of doing it uh, for us as engineers to try to communicate, like as uh, marketing for uh, uh, AI is trying them to communicate or you, uh, this, uh, this tool is solving all your problems, right? We, as a software engineers, we should probably start and explain them. Yes, you can solve it, but give us time, right? To, uh, you know, we can solve it, but we have to understand what is going on, right? So, yeah. Uh, uh, so first of all, you cannot, uh, you know, you, you cannot, uh, you know, what, what, what the other people are doing or what the other people are telling you, asking you, you cannot control that. So the question is that, what do you want to do? You know, like, do you want to become an expert in that field? T tell me, do you want to become an expert in that field? Well, yes, I am becoming already. It's not a question that uh, if I want, I'm already transitioning. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you can only control what you can do, right? So the noise that is outside, uh, well, you cannot control for that. What you need to do is 
if you really want to go into into that domain, uh, you need to uh, have a strategy for yourself. So let's say that you're a software engineer and you want to get into that uh, field uh, of work. So there, there may be different strategies to, to try to take. And, and I want to stress uh, the fact that software engineering in machine learning is absolutely not new. Uh, it's something that has been existing for decades and we should not uh, dismiss uh, the work that MLOps engineers uh, have been doing, uh, machine learning engineers have been doing, and the people with that type of experience will have an easy time uh, convincing hiring managers that they can actually do the job. So what I would say is that uh, generative AI is somewhat uh, more new, but if you wanted to work in the field, uh, you are not uh, contained uh, to only work in generative AI. You can, as a software engineer, you can easily become a machine learning engineer. You can easily uh, switch to becoming more of a data engineer. Um, and uh, if you work as an MLOps engineer, for example, uh, you may not work on LLMs, but the type of skills that you're going to gain are going to be very valuable for you to work on problems that involve LLMs. So when we think about MLOps, we usually uh, imply that we have ML capabilities in-house. When we talk about LLMs, it's not always the case. Uh, so if you want to deploy your own LLM in-house, you need MLOps capabilities. And if you are a software engineer that have that type of skills, uh, you are going to be extremely valuable to implement such a solution. Now, if you want to build tools that do not require deploying in-house LLMs, uh, because now there's a lot of API providers like OpenAI, and there's a lot more uh, where you can actually build ML capabilities without having any ML model being deployed in in-house. And in that specific case, uh, which, you know, it, it may involve a lot of people, you know, it may involve a lot of uh, products and, and projects, you may not need the MLOps uh, uh, skills. And there are additional tools that may be important to, to learn, like LangChain, like uh, Llama Index. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tools that are going to help software engineers connect uh, APIs to manipulate the usage of those type of uh, AI. And you're going to be able to, to build tools with it or, or product with it. So, and being able to train yourself on this kind of skills, tools, is actually pretty easy because there's not a lot of uh, framework that allow you to work with uh, API providers for AI models. The big one is LangChain. There's like a couple of uh, other uh, tools that allow you to, to do that, but but not a lot more. So, so there, there, are, there are two sides of as a software engineer working in AI. There's a side where you don't have an ML model in the house, and the only way that you can build things is through API providers, in which case you need to train yourself on LangChain and a couple of more tools. And it really, you know, you can learn LangChain in, in a week. It's not really a complex thing. Um, and the rest of the tools, you know, it's another week. If you want to become a, if you want to become more of a MLOps engineer, uh, this requires a lot more um, um, time because uh, you need. It's much more of a. It's a type of skills that you really gain through experience, more than uh, learning from textbooks and and courses online, uh, and. Uh, 
But if you have that type of experience, you're going to be invaluable in a company as a software engineer to be at the center of any AI product. Uh, so, uh, and and to to reach uh, this type of career, it's not difficult either. Uh, you just need to convince one person that you have enough knowledge of ML and enough experience of infra to be able to work on, uh, on teams where ML is at the center of what is being built. Okay, well, thank you, Demil, because I think uh, it's, uh, you know, it's an aha point for me, a uh, like, moment for me in terms of, oh, okay, if we uh, integrate, uh, like, a uh, ready-to-use uh, one model, we just need uh, to understand uh, how this uh, middle layer works, uh, for example, one chain, right? And, uh, uh, but if we want to use custom models, uh, we have to go through a different process. So this for me as a software engineer is already like, oh, okay. So there are two ways, all right? And I can or train myself in one way and I already can solve my skills or I can go uh, in another way. So, and here I have to understand what is more, more valuable for me, right? Uh, so what what will bring more value for uh, me, uh, you know, in exchange of my skills. And probably I would say I have to first train myself in terms of uh, integrating like uh, ready to use uh, uh, generative AI models, right? And the ones I have, because uh, the time of uh, learning is not that uh, extensive, right? And I can probably do it between uh, my work and my free time. And then if I want to become uh, uh, more interesting from, uh, uh, you know, uh, from company point of view, I would probably need to train myself in terms of uh, building MLOps, right? Uh, so in terms of building skills in MLOps field. But uh, now my question would be, oh, do I have to learn machine learning? Because learning machine learning, it requires years, right? Yeah. Um... So to me, it really depends. You're going to have a hard time convincing somebody to hire you uh, as an MLOps engineer if you know nothing about ML. Uh, so you at, in, you at least need to understand what is involved in terms of data, in terms of models, in terms of the problems we're trying to solve. You're going to be more useful as an engineer if you have that type of understanding of ML. I can tell you that uh, I worked in companies where the MLOps engineers uh, gained the knowledge of ML mostly by working with ML engineers. But still, you know, they came into the team because they were excited about ML. And to be excited about ML, well, that involved, uh, that implies that you, you at least learn a bit what are the different problems you're trying to solve and how it is done at maybe high level. Um, I would say that you will need to learn a bit of ML at the very least if you want to work in AI. And the reason is that if you want to build some new product that involve uh, uh, some AI capabilities uh, and you're using an AI provider, like an AI API provider, like OpenAI, for example, you may be able to build a product by just uh, writing a couple of good prompts that is going to get you what you need when it comes to uh, the product capabilities that are needed. But uh, it may, you may be uh, you may need to fine tune a model. You may need to. Uh, uh, explain to people what's going on. And if you have absolutely no clue, uh, it's going to be difficult for you to advance, I believe. So when it comes to fine tuning a model, I think it requires some very minimum knowledge on how to set up a data set to train a model. And when you train this model, you need some minimum knowledge on how to assess the model. You need to make sure that you have a model that is good enough for you to do what you actually want to build. So you need to have this knowledge, and this requires 
some knowledge in high high level knowledge in the intricacies of, of ML, I believe. If you want to deploy models in-house, um, there will be a whole process on how the data moves around, and you need to have some understanding uh, on how this data is used. It's going to be um, hard to be extremely useful if uh, you don't know that there are some things you cannot do with the data. And to know what are the things you cannot do with data when it comes to machine learning, you need to have this exposure to machine learning. So I'm not saying you need to learn about the algorithms, all the algorithms, but you need to learn about the different metrics. You need to learn about the different problems that can be solved with uh, machine learning. So, and I would argue that if you are interested to work in the field of AI, it's it's difficult to believe that you are not interested enough to learn about machine learning and what what it implies. You know, I uh, I well I I think uh, there is no lack of willingness to learn things, uh, but there is uh, uh, it's kind of you know time and. Uh, you know, it requires time to, to, to learn new things, uh, and especially in machine learning, right? It's not like something that uh, you will have, like, uh, from uh, day one, uh, enlightenment uh, from the sky, right? It, uh, it You have to uh, sit there, you have to spend your time out of work, uh, right? Uh, because you can't do it uh, during your work time. And uh, it's kind of again uh, because a uh, few few years ago we were required to your uh, cloud engineering, right? Before that we were required to learn React, and for me it's like you know it's like a never-ending process of constantly being in a position where we have to learn something because uh, how the market moves, right? Or because somebody is uh, launching a big ca big campaign on uh, AI and uh, you know marketers are really good right uh, nowadays and they like wow the market is like pumped by what is uh, going on and uh, I'm feeling this as a software engineer I'm feeling this pressure and uh, you know it's uh, I, I don't want to transmit the wrong information I don't want to learn I want to learn because uh, it's uh, you know I love learning and I love to acquire new skills and more are acquired, more, uh, uh, you know, I can understand, but I can do a lot of interesting things. Uh, but damn, it's not that easy, you know. It's like still uh, there, I have to sit uh, down and learn something, right? Yeah. Well, this is uh, the main feature of a, a technology job. You will always need to learn something new. You cannot, if you stay... Uh, and, and you sit on the knowledge you have for a couple of years, you are outdated and you become almost useless. I've seen a lot of people that have been software engineers for 10 years in the same company and that type of company were not very mature in the technologies and they started to do the same thing over and over using the same tools, the same techniques. And when some financial difficulties uh, happen in the company, they were not as useful and, as other people. And they had a hard time finding other jobs because they were not updated on the skill. So being up to date on the tools and techniques and, and you know, technologies, that's, if you go into the, um, you know, software engineering job, well, you need to expect this. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no real way around it. It's going to always be this way. Uh, and, and I think it's exciting. You know, I think it's, it makes it somewhat fun. You know, you're, you're never bored. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of excitement around the AI and suddenly you're required to know uh, 20 things uh, right now. And it's, it's very stressful, right? But uh, if, but that's a game and you need to find a way to deal with it. And what I would advise uh, if you want to get into that field of AI as a software engineer, I would advise to absolutely not open a machine learning book 
don't open a machine learning book and start to learn about all the algorithms. I'm saying like if you want to prioritize your, your learning, don't start by learning about how algorithms work. Start by something that is a bit more high level, like machine learning system design. So machine learning system design is learning about how to design ML products, ML solutions, end-to-end, -end, uh, and what are the different uh, infrastructures needs you will, need, you will have for uh, the different product, uh, what are the different metrics you will need to, uh, to account for, what, are the, what is the different data you, you will need to think about, but you avoid to think about what specific algorithm you're going to use. You think about ML as a tool that solves the problem. Uh, you understand what that problem is. For example, when you think about supervised learning, well, you know that there are hundreds or thousands of supervised learning algorithms, and you just uh, abstract away the logic of each of those algorithms, and you refer to supervised learning algorithm as a way to solve a problem. That's a tool that takes some input data and predicts some output data. And that's it. Uh, when you think about LLM, you think about it as a black box that takes some text and generates some text. And uh, how can you use that tool to solve your business problems? So this is machine learning system design. And uh, I would advise any software engineer that want to uh, get into the field of AI, I would advise uh, a software engineer to start by machine learning system design. It will, get, it will get you a good sense on how ML relates to business. ML relates to potential products, products that you can experience every day, like uh, ads ranking or feeds, feed ranking that you see on any social media. Um, you will learn uh, how uh, you can build those products end-to-end uh, -end, uh, with a black box supervised learning algorithm without having to understand how the algorithm itself works. Now, I'm not saying that at some point you cannot dig into the algorithm, but as a first step, I would avoid to dig into the algorithm. I would try to understand how ML can connect to business, product, users, and the necessary infrastructure to implement uh, ML solution. So that would be, that would be my, first, uh, my first advice. Now that you have potentially with ML system design, you know, uh, a knowledge on how it connects. To, so everything connects into a company when it comes to ML. Um, you can dig into tools that are useful those days. Langchain. Uh, or you can do that in parallel. Langchain and, and uh, there might be some other tools that may be useful. Like, for example, if you work in MLOps, you may want to learn about Kubernetes. You may want to learn about Kubeflow. If you are building some uh, ML pipelines, you may want to learn about MLflow. Uh, you may want to learn about Airflow because there's a lot of pipelines that can be built with those type of orchestrator system. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 that would be my, my first, uh, the first step I would take. As soon as you know about ML system design, you can plan for the next step. You can see what is a skill you're lacking, uh, but you're going to have a better overview of the field uh, for you to make a better decision, a more educated decision on what will be the next step for you, the next educational steps for you uh, to get into that uh, journey in getting into the uh, AI career. Okay, great. And just uh, one last question. Uh, so, if I uh, uh, start to uh, build, uh, uh, start to learn like a uh, ML system, right? So, ML system, we also need a a, a, a model, right? So, uh, where would you suggest me to go for a model? Do I do? Would I just go like to a uh, hug and face, uh, grab a model there, and uh, just try to build uh, a system around that model? Would that uh, be enough? What do you think? So, I mean, you need to be careful when you ask this question. 
you are asking, it seems to me you are asking this question as a software engineer that does not have the expertise in machine learning. Uh, yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. So I would actually advise as a software engineer to not start to go fishing for some models uh, and to try to play around it because this is uh, the job of a software engineer. Uh, this is a job of a machine learning engineer and to be useful in starting to play around with uh, those models, you would actually need to dig into how those models work and how you can actually extract value from it by actually uh, using them in code. So uh, when you start to download those models from Hugging Face and, and start to play with it and try to do to build things with it, you're not anymore a software engineer, you become a ML engineer. Uh, so okay. at this point, uh, my advice would not be to start to to go at random for the a model you, that you find interesting. At this point, if it's what you want to do, I would start to educate myself a bit more um, clearly about how the algorithms themselves work and what's going on under the hood when you're using, you know, for example, in Hugging Face, you can use some frameworks like transformers to train or fine-tune models. Um, and I would not uh, start to do that without understanding what's going on under the hood. Okay. I need, you know, we need to understand how the data is being prepared. You will need to understand what metrics are being optimized uh, because the metrics you're trying to optimize need to connect to the business problem you're trying to solve. So when you start to dig into playing with the models themselves, um, I think you need to start to understand, you need to understand what you're doing and you need to have a plan to, uh, to, uh, to, to understand what you're going to do with that model after. So I would, I would actually uh, uh, go to an ML expert. You can potentially have some consultant, you know, that could establish a plan on what to do with that model that you may find somewhere on some, on some, on some providers. So just, just be careful with that. It's not, it's not the same thing to use an API than to start to download a model to train it yourself uh, and try to uh, manage uh, its output afterward. So it's a different job. But uh, what uh, uh, I'm still thinking about, if I want to learn ML system design, right? If uh, I don't have any model to use, uh, how would, uh, how would, uh, how should I deal with it, right? So m machine learning system design is not about being an, it's not about being an ML engineer. It's about okay. being a technical lead, uh, almost a product manager, a technical product manager, uh, and you don't have to actually code anything to learn about or to design uh, the technical capabilities that will be needed for a product. To be able to establish a logic around how many servers, what type of servers, what type of database, what type of uh, infrastructures I would need to build a product does not mean that you have to code it. So you don't need to go around okay. and fish for a model to actually learn to design products uh, that may involve machine learning. Okay, great. Thank you. Any, any more questions? Well, I think uh, at the moment it's uh, clear uh, because, uh, you know, for me it was like essential to understand, uh, like to hear uh, uh, an expert voice, uh, right, uh, uh, in terms of am I doing right things, uh, right, uh, because I'm, I'm learning, right, I'm, I'm going through a learning process, I'm trying to, uh, I, I have like MLOps uh, uh, course, I have an ML system course, uh, and I'm trying to 
plug, uh, uh, you know, a, a model uh, into an API, uh, you know, try like these small things and trying to still understand what is going on, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, hearing it from an expert uh, person, uh, like, uh, oh, you have to decide where you want to go. And uh, if you decide to go just a simple integration, you have to learn X, Y, Z. But then uh, if you want to go deeper, you can go into MLOps, uh, ML system design, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, this is uh, like uh, cleared now for me. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, probably I think uh, my questions are uh, finished here. And, you know, like, um, I'm not saying you need to decide, but uh, I'm saying that uh, there are different ways to go about it and you may need to prioritize. Uh, there are either there are things that are easier, like dealing with uh, API providers. In a, very quickly, you can build, uh, you can become a, a very useful software engineer working with ML products because uh, you know how to put things together. And this can be done very quickly. MLOps uh, is something that takes years, I think, to become uh, more useful. So it's a uh, you don't have to decide, you know, you, you may need to, to choose what you, what would be the next step. It doesn't mean that you cannot get to the other side at some point. Uh, so it's a matter of, of prioritizing more than, than deciding. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, those are the two sides that I would, I would see, uh, when it comes to software engineering in, in, in AI. What do you think you're going to do now? What would be your, your next steps? Uh, my next steps will be, uh, well, uh, finalize the learning about uh, uh, middle layer of for LLM integrations like uh, Lang LangChain and Llama Index, right? Uh, because uh, you have, uh, there are like uh, different steps that you have to understand in terms of uh, how to build the conversation, right? There are different terminologies you have to understand. And I have to, uh, fix that knowledge, right? Uh, and uh, the second step would be for me, uh, ML system design, because I'm already doing a course. Uh, so I have to, uh, well, I, I want to finish it and uh, I want to gain that uh, knowledge as well, you know, because uh, I think uh, uh, it, uh, it as a, uh, you know, uh, for the knowledge I have right now, it should not be that difficult. And uh, after it, the next step would be understanding the machine learning. And that would require probably the most of the time, but it would be a, a longer, longer journey, right? Because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it requires, uh, yeah, it requires higher knowledge. Yeah. And I would, I would push on making sure that you actually need to to learn that knowledge before actually engaging in it i would uh i would uh if you're very interested in it and you want to learn about it go for it if you feel you need to know about that i would step back and i would think about if really you need to know about the details of, of machine learning to be able to work as a software engineer on machine learning products okay so in this case you know we can conclude the session today uh, and we, I hope that this was useful for you. And, uh, you know, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to, to come back or to ask me and hopefully, you know, I can be of some help. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you and, uh, the information you shared with me is very useful. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I will be happy to share, uh, how I advance my advancement in my learning. Yeah. Well, good luck with everything. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's, go it's going to become less messy in the, in the coming years.